Hey guys, welcome back to Ebbs and Flows, where we talk about the highs and lows on and off the field. Today, joined by Jackson Hastings. What's up, bro? Hey, bro. Thanks for having me. I'm going to ask you a tough question straight off the bat. And whenever I hear Jackson Hastings and when you're coming in today, I've got a preconceived notion of you, yep. but I've never met you before. Yeah. And I'm sure you probably hear this a lot. And we had something similar with a guy named Sowie um, before he came to the Penrith Club. We were like, oh, what's he like? What's he like? Yep. And once he came to the club, we actually really loved him. Yeah. I feel like you've got that perception around you. Do you feel that? Yeah, yeah, I do. It's not really a tough question, bro, because um, as you were asking me, I probably felt that walking in too. Yep. Um, I walk into a room full of people wherever I am and I get that straight away. It's probably been something I've had since I was probably maybe, I reckon, 16 when I first stepped into a proper team environment that was close to full time. Um, don't get me wrong, I haven't done myself many favours over the years. Um, <laughs> there's been a few instances where I've certainly put myself in a position where uh, I've set myself up to fail in terms of being a good teammate member of a locker room, um, all that sort of stuff. But there's also been other sides that have been blown way out of proportion when people actually get to meet me. And the ones that really do know me on a personal level uh, love me to bits and I'll do anything for them. It's the one, it's the surface relationships that I probably struggle with. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm working hard on trying to break that too because I don't want that to be my legacy or be remembered for. Because obviously talent's not an issue for you and you've always had it. <coughs> what do you think that stems from? Where does that come from? Yeah, well, the talent part sort of probably... Um, it got lost in, in translation a little bit. I'll probably use that as a bit of a mask, being good at footy as a kid without making proper relationships. I would struggle with that. That's always been something I struggled with. I sat with like the, the cooler group at school, the footy boys. I went to a footy school down in Wollongong. I uh, was obviously best mates with Jack Bird, Adam Clune, people like that. And they were always really close and connected. And I was, I was there, but I was sort of just like just there. I wasn't present in many conversations. I sort of just sat there because they were boys I played footy with. So I probably hid behind my talent and didn't work on relationships. And then as I got into a first grade system where you have to be close, you do everything together. I didn't realize obviously that you spend more time with these people than what you do with your family and, and, and loved ones. And my relationship skills were never very good. And from the moment I stepped into first grade, I was probably on the outer because of that. So, and People don't realise, like, especially when you go, and probably when you were coming through too, yeah. and it would have been harder 10 years before that. Yeah. Like once you go into that football environment, it is almost like high school. You sort of got to figure out where you fit in. Yeah, right. um, all the older boys are like, whatever they do, like that's the way you just got to follow. Yeah. And when you're a rookie, sometimes you forget that. Don't you? Especially at the club I went into too. I went into the Roosters with, uh, they just won the comp. Obviously Sonny, Sonny had just arrived the year before. Jim Maloney, Mitchell Pierce, Jared, Boy, Jenko. Like, I was stepping into an environment with people that had been there and done that, that, that I respected. I was a Rooster supporter growing up. Obviously, my old man played for him. And I wish it went completely different. Um, I would have loved to have been at one club for my whole career. Obviously, that, that hasn't been the case. But, um, yeah, as I said, I struggled from the, the jump as a kid with relationships, and it's something that I'm still working on now. Like, I, I see people to help me with that. And... Um, People that have known me since I was 16 and now can see a massive improvement in that. It's still a long way to go, but it's something I want to be remembered for. Someone that started struggling with relationships with people that has now been able to help young kids and that, that hopefully can close the gap. So you're saying that you see people about this? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty open with it, bro. Um, I'm on my own sort of path with my mental health journey at the moment, which has been pretty cool. The nights have been massive. My coach, um, Adzi O'Brien, has been massive for me, mate. Like he's in A lot of coaches always just went like that with me, put the hand out and pushed me away. And, you know, that never really helped me but he's gone the complete opposite way Madge did it when he was at the Tigers and then Adzi O'Brien's did it for me too put his arm around me and um, I think that's helped me not only as a person but a footballer I had my best year last year I reckon by a mile everything um, that I wanted to be I was becoming and um, hopefully I can continue that this year Newcastle <coughs> um, obviously had a great year last year you were sort of injury sort of put you out a little bit yep. what was the vibe like around that place it crazy. was cool it was cool mate huh? it's crazy I um, you hear about Newcastle and uh, when you're going well the town the town's going well you know what I mean we haven't got um, we haven't got fans we've got supporters like diehard like true blue supporters that support the club through thick and thin obviously there was a lean patch there where they won three spoons in a row or something like that. Um, didn't have many great years, but you can sort of see um, when the town gets behind the club, which is always that the, the players feed off that, regardless of the score or, or how we're actually doing on the field. Um, 
the sellout crowds towards the back end of the year were, were unbelievable. Some of the best crowds I played in front of. I was lucky enough to play in England, obviously, and the crowds over there are They're different cool. yeah. in terms of like the chanting and stuff like that. But the crowds we had at Newcastle, like <laughs> diehard, loyal supporters that turn up in the pouring rain, we still get 15,000 on a Thursday night. Um, yeah, it's goosebumps kind of stuff, bro. Um, we, we, sh we didn't play our best in either semi. We got... We uh, relied on KP brilliance in that first semi and, and playing through the shoulder and, and the crowd definitely got us home and then we didn't give a great account of ourselves over New Zealand, which is disappointing, <coughs> but we feel like we have a team to, to go all the way and, and, and that's certainly the goal this year. There's um, <coughs> obviously expectation on Newcastle and I interviewed the Warriors boys last week and yeah. you guys are probably aren't a surprise anymore. Like people mm. expect things of, of you guys. Yeah. Um, what's that like internal conversations being within the team? Are you guys leaning towards that pressure? Yeah. Or yeah. is, that, is the pressure you guys are feeling? Yeah, well, we do a lot of stuff like every club. Pressure is a privilege. I'm sure you would have heard that a million times throughout your career. The All Blacks use it as, as a key thing and most clubs have probably adopted that. But um, yeah, last year, there's always pressure on you to perform as a professional athlete, as you know, mate. But there's certainly more pressure this year. People expect us to go well. The town expects us to go well. But more importantly, we expect ourselves to go well. Last year, we were learning new systems. We had a few new coaches. We obviously had a, a new spine. We tried Kalen at six. Didn't quite work out. Obviously, his head knocks and stuff like that. We went back to what uh, the team sort of looked like before that. Tyson went to six. I went to seven. Kay went to one. And then Phoenix emerged as a, as a brilliant nine. So, I mean, yeah, all of us with that experience are, are playing together, playing good footy together, winning, knowing that our attack works. There is more pressure on us and teams are going to be coming for us, but we need to walk towards that and, and, and improve. And... And carry that as a bit of a badge of honour. If a team um, comes at you and uh, treats you with respect and, and thinks you're a good team, that's a, that's a sign you're doing something right. So we've got to walk towards that for sure. Um, you talked about him and I know he gets a lot of the headlights, all the headlines and, and he deserves them. Yeah. KP, we're sort of talking about him a little bit off air. Yeah. What's he been like this year? Because he looks different. He looks different. <sighs> yeah. I don't like rapping him too much because that's all I do. But um, yeah, he looks different this year. He, um, he come back with an edge and a purpose to him. I think he... You know, his Daly M speech was pretty harsh when he said, when he mentioned that he was letting people down. I don't think he's ever let anyone down, you know. He's a young kid with the world at his feet. Um, he nearly won a Daly M four years ago, I think it was. If he didn't hurt his hammy, he probably would have, he would be a two time Daly M winner. So, I mean, he's performed at the highest level for Queensland and he just works hard, man. I think people see the, the relaxed side of him on Instagram or walking down the beach having a coffee. He's got his little dog that he takes to the park and does all that stuff, but he's our hardest trainer by a mile. Um, fantastic leader and yeah he's come back with a fresh mindset no one can touch him at training i know it's only training and it's not full contact and things like that but training tries matter man yeah he's got about <laughs> he's got about 70 of them so i mean um i was just saying to you off air you're passing the ball and nothing's on and then he just does does all this mad shit with his feet and flick passes hits the winger dummies goes himself and you sit back and you just you're lucky to have him on your team so he doesn't rest on his laurels, mate. He's been brilliant this preseason. Yeah, I think earlier in his career, you sort of seen him where he'd park up on that left side off a wide four split yeah. and obviously like set up yay, goosey, and just pick the right pass. Yeah. Like, where do you see the evolution of his game? Is it more involvement or are you, are you setting up certain plays for you guys? Because you guys have played a year together now yeah. and obviously people got video, they know what's coming. Yeah. Stopping it is a different question, but is there little subtleties that you're trying to add to your guys' connection? Yeah, well, he helps me because I'm slow as anything. So you just give it <laughs> to him and he hits the gas and he's gone. But we um, definitely put him in positions to succeed. Um, I won't give too much away because I don't want people to know what we're doing. But there's certainly points on the field that we like to give Kalen the ball. There's, there's no secret. It's the wide not, four. Yeah, the <laughs> wide four. And there's no secret that Kalen likes the left-hand side of the field. But the evolution of his game is he's been going a lot more to the right. I don't know what the stat was, but we scored a hell of a lot of trials on the right. Obviously, Dom Young got 25 or 6, broke the club record. And yeah, quite year for the... But then also, Greggy Marzio on the left had 23, I think. And then both our centres had over 15 tries. This. So, I mean, he's swinging both sides of the field. Uh, he's not just parking himself to left, right or middle. He's playing both sides of the ruck. And, um, yeah, we put him in positions to succeed. And um, he's done that this preseason. So, hopefully, he just carries on where he left off last year and, and, and goes even better. I kind of like how the game sort of evolve like obviously growing up watching football in the 2000s and yep. it feels like that at the moment where like an early ball to the centres a class is like a good play yep. but I feel like the fullbacks are going wider again like yep. KP's playing out wide Reese Walsh is playing out wide yep. but for a while it was Tommy and Turbo through that middle third of the mm. field and get a line break and they push up but it's a lot more exciting when it's out wide isn't it yeah and I think the different body types I don't think you want Kalen and Reese Walsh to be a battering ram for the middle and, and playing too many like ruck plays I mean there's obviously time and place if you get late in the half and there's a middle forward that's blown and you want Kalen and Reese certainly up the middle because they're so 
they're so fast. Whereas Tommy early on in games is so big and robust that he can bounce off people and, and you're not worried about it. Whereas you don't want to put your uh, your marquee fullback in a position to get injured. <laughs> so we'll just park him out wide and, and let him run around the threes. I know he, he's tortured to defend, as you know, like when you've got a big back roll like Frizzit training and then you've got KP in behind, it's kind of like I've got to hedge my bets to be able to get him speed-wise. Mm. But if I let Tyson Brazil blow my inside shoulder off, he's going to score regardless. So having that problem at the back, I mean, fullback's probably – I mean, I don't want to disrespect any other position, but arguably the the hottest position in the game right now in every single team, the fullbacks are brilliant. So you look at the top ten fullbacks, and it's just like they're all guns. Yeah, how do you name them? Like you'd have an argument like top fifteen and where you put every fullback in it. So mm. I mean, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to give anyone ammo. But I mean, um, <laughs> I do enough of that. But um, yeah, no, it's a pretty crazy position at the moment. Um, obviously, Reese took the the comp by storm last year with his speed and. He wasn't just like playing three on twos. He was getting a three on three and running around the half and the centre and just playing a two on one with the winger. Like his speed's different. But I think Kalen at full flight, I'd probably have him. I'm biased, but I'd have him at one. Yeah, probably when um, Reese got named and like I'm, I'm a Reese Walsh fan. Yeah, I was still thinking like, nah, KP's the guy. And obviously Reese yep. proved everyone wrong. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like to me that little Reese getting the Queensland jersey, he's a good looking dude as well. Yeah, like yeah. it's different when. Teddy gets the jersey yeah. and KP's like, oh, it is what it is. Yep. But someone who's probably just as cool as KP, yeah. probably a little bit less talented, just as quick as KP. Yep. I feel like since then he just sort of switched it on. I reckon what Billy said is scary as a New South Welshman. Like if you have them both in the same team and they do what they did with Cherry those years ago where just he put them on 50, through the middle, just yeah. play two fullbacks, Michael Morgan, Cooper Cronk, they've all done it. So, I mean, Queensland seem to get the best out of their team when they have that guy that can come on and play multiple positions. So... I mean, I hope for, for my friend's sake, KP gets the one. But then as a footy fan, I love watching Reese Walsh play too. So, I mean, if you have both those guys in the team, I mean, Madge will have a few sleepless nights, I think, picking people to defend those two. <laughs> um, the other side of the conversation is obviously got like Tommy Turbo, Teddy. And I know it's early to be talking about Origin, yeah. but do you still back Teddy to, yeah. to have that role? Yeah, yeah, I'm a massive footy fan and I don't know Teddy from a bar, so I've never met him. Obviously, had the pleasure of playing against him, but... He's a champion, bro. You never write off champions. And I think having him, Turbo, Latrell in the team, I know for the purists, they want centres in the centre position. But if you've got the three best players in their position in the comp, arguably, in the team, you just got to pick the best 17 and then go from there, I reckon. So I would have all three in and I would give Teddy the, the chance to fall on his sword. I think he's earned it. Like, his career speaks for itself. So Yeah, for sure. I look at Teddy's game and, like you said, it's very – like. And you could talk football too. So when you play for six six four split, but he's mm. on the four. I feel like one thing that's hard to play with Teddy is like you don't know where he's going to end yep. up. They sort of bounce around, and yeah. like I played a guy named Tyrone Peachy, where you just don't know where he's going to go. Yeah. So like a lot of football about momentum cues and getting to points now. Yeah, it is hard to play off a little bit. And he it? and he runs low to the ground too. So if he does take a wide four and he beats the back rower and he runs towards the half and he dummies and he bumps you off, the rest of the line's gone backwards. So then he just runs right across the other side of the field. So the right-hand side of the field needs to move up. But, like, he's worked through the middle of the field, man. It's crazy. Like, he gets kick return, takes play three, sometimes takes the last tackle to get him to a good kick. Then he's on the end of shape. Like, his fitness must be off the charts, bro, because he's yeah, always in your crazy. face. When you play the Roosters, like, you, you game plan for him. Obviously, you want to put him in positions where he's uncomfortable, but he kind of just thrives on being uncomfortable. It's kind of weird. You put him in a corner and you think, here we go, we'll get down there and... And we'll trap him in a corner. Then he'll do just this mad run and put him on the front foot. So he's a champion, bro. <laughs> like the hands on the head, eh? then just takes off. Like it's crazy, up yeah. You he's see everywhere. Shorts halfway down his ass, and then just comes up with a sixty meter run or a try. It's pretty. It's pretty cool, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know when they have hoodie mellow or those yeah, guys. Yeah. He's like the shirt up, yeah. pants down, yeah. Teddy. That's when he's it's on. It's iconic, eh? Uh, who'd you look up to playing as a kid? Like I, I watch you play, and like very like ball dominant you love to touch the ball yeah. move the boys around great tempo to your game yeah. is that something you developed or who did you love watching growing up yeah well I'll, believe it or not I was actually quite quick as a kid um, a lot of I, don't, I don't think you're slow because I when I picture you getting line breaks like it's not like people were I've got it in my I think I've got it in my head that I'm slow like I'm I was heavy as like when I went to the UK I was probably 90 when I was at Manly I was probably like 96 97 kilos middle of my stint in England I got to like 101 mm. then I played at the Tigers and, and last so you're playing year, at 101 well I was 102 and a half last year <laughs> running around like like sometimes I look at photos of me in that white jersey I'm like oh I don't know about that <laughs> then I had surgery obviously again and I got heavy like I got pretty heavy I don't know what I got to I got maybe and this isn't like bad bad weight I just like because I was just leg in a cast just upper body weight so I got to maybe like 104 and a bit and then me and the wow. coach had to have yeah. a chat like yeah. he was like bro you need to you need to drop some weight and I'm down to like 98 
three now, so I'm pretty comfortable with that weight. So, um, yeah, I looked up to Joey, obviously, halfback, night supporter. Yeah, love what he did for the game and getting to work with him still, like, pinch yourself moment. When he comes into training with no shoes on, Sonny, he's probably had about 15 beers the, nights before, uh, the night before, <laughs> sorry, and he just... He's hitting poles from 40 metres away, calling himself the eighth. It's, pr it's pretty cool. Like It is impressive, eh, when he jumps on the field and they can yeah. still do what they do at that it's age. Great. Like, he, he, I think he gets – like, we can't do what you can do, bro. You know what I mean? Like, he can do all this mad stuff still that – I remember watching a video on Origin. He hit a torpy um, and hit the crossbar from 40 and he called it before he did it. And, like, mm. just shit like that. Like, I could only dream of doing that. But I love JT as well. Like, I'm a proud New South Welshman, but watching JT play, like, small in stature, tough as anything, ultimate competitor – and you try and take parts from, from all people's games, but I think the way that he just played with his heart on his sleeve, got the team around, and yeah, I, we've got the same manager, so I've been lucky enough to get to know him a little bit. I wouldn't say I know him really well, but I had full, some conversations with him that I, that I hold on to, but just this imp competitiveness and toughness is what I took from him. Yeah, 100%. Like, oh, oh, we were talking about him a couple of podcasts ago, and just leads off effort, and yeah. they're like, wherever the ball is. Like, I had a coach say, he's worth his weight in gold in tackle five, because wherever the ball is, he's underneath, he's yeah. doing league tackles, yeah, all that crazy. sort of stuff. And especially the biggest games. Like, he's, his best games are always in origin. Like, that's what I think, like, defining a player is when, like, KP's ga game three a couple of years ago when yeah. New South Wales probably should have won and he just decided I'm going to be the best player on the field. Moments like that make players, and I think we just spoke about Teddy, he's had heaps of them in origin and test Munster's matches. Munster's got that about him too, eh? Munster's yeah. a freak, yeah. yeah. He, and he's got the rap for being a big game player, but, yeah, blokes like that are just a crazy. Cherry, like, when... When it's Golden Point or you need a big play, you know Cherry's going to deliver. Cooper Cronk was like that, Thurston, and that's why they're the best best players in the game and so widely respected. Yeah. Um. So you had a little stint in England. Obviously, yeah. picked up Man of Steel. What was that experience like? Best four years of my life. Obviously, uh, the years leading up to it weren't weren't the best for me personally. Um, and then I went over there and, and I was just... You had a run-in with Chiz, eh? A little run-in. We had a little run-in. <laughs> Chiz is my boy too. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I've got nothing, believe it or not, no one will believe me saying this. I've got nothing but love for Cherry and, and yeah. the way he plays and, and I respect him and he knows that. We've, we've had conversations prior to that. But um, I went over to the UK and um, I had to rebuild myself as a person first and then a player. And I was lucky enough to land on my feet at Salford. We weren't the greatest team. I didn't know anyone beside Junior Sauer and the whole team. Yep. I remember watching Junior Sauer when I was about four on the lounge. No, not, not that young, but... Uh, <laughs> he's getting old. Bro, he's, he's about old. 40. He still plays mm. the... Um, He's good on Instagram too. But yeah, just went over there, wanted to re revive my career, obviously, and, and then rebuild myself as a person. And I was lucky enough to fall on my feet at Salford, as I said. And do you, uh, Sorry, do you re when you say rebuild yourself, do you rebuild yourself personally and then football follows? Or did yeah. you do it the other way around? Like, oh, I'm starting to play good football now. You know what I mean? My life just needed to slow down, bro. Like, I was just doing everything at a frantic, frantic speed. I'd, I'd debuted as an 18 year old, won two minor premierships in a row. And then the year after we won the second minor premiership, everything just went downhill. Probably attitude wasn't great. Um, had fallen outs with some senior players at the Roosters. Got let go from a club that I loved. Didn't know what I was going to do. Was playing reserve grade. Went to Manly. Um, was in and out of the side. We made the finals. We got we got beat by Penrith. And then the following year, obviously, um, was playing first grade. And then uh, whatever happened, happened. And then I just needed to slow down and just focus on creating relationships, having people that I that I trust, letting people in, letting my guard down and stop being so like, um, I don't know what the word is, bro. Like I, I'd rather, I used to rather be on my own than surround myself with people and I was just locking myself away and becoming miserable. So, I mean, I got to go over there and no family, no friends, knew no one, had to start again and created some really, really good bonds with people that I still cherish now and then in the long run, that helped me with my football. The 2019 season was the best year that I had in my career. And then I went to Wigan in 20 and 21. So I went 19 grand final, Great Britain tour, 20 grand final, won the Man of Steel in 19. And, and everything was just going like that for me. But so was my life. I met my partner about eight weeks into my first stint over in the UK. So the back end of 2018. And, and she helped slow my life down too. You know, you're not out trying to chase chicks or, or <laughs> stay up to all hours yeah. in the morning. You know what it's like. I was only... 21 years old when I when I went to England which is crazy young like crazy young and then yeah she helped slow my life down and, and gave me a, a bit of a purpose and I had someone that would help me you know as as bad as it sounds she would help me with my washing she would help me with my cleaning she'd just make life easier when I got home from training I didn't have to do it all on my own so she certainly helped for sure um, I've probably got an unpopular opinion but I feel like the Super League should almost be 
like the breeding ground for NRL. Yeah. Do, you, do you agree with that? Yeah, call? a million percent, bro. Like, but if I say that to an English person, obviously. Yeah, you know, and they're very patriotic. That's what I love about um, England as well. Like you played over there, where you're from, that's who you support. And that goes back generations, no matter what league you're in. I got lucky enough to play for a club that wasn't expected to do well in Salford, but he's so loved by their fan base. They're not the biggest fan base in the world, but they're passionate as anything. And then I got to go play for arguably the biggest club in England, in mm. Wigan, and their supporters will let you know if you're playing good or bad, but they're arguably one of the best fan bases in the world as well. You know, they play at a massive stadium. They expect their team to win. They've got ancient loyal written all over their gear. Like, they've been supporters from day one too. So when I went over, I'd, I was playing with Greeny. Greeny and Ches were the halves at Manly, and I was learning off them too. And then when I went over, Greeny was a guy that I watched play for whole KR for three years, I think it was, then went to Wigan and then come back to the Storm and rebuild his career. So You could really relate to that? I had a little bit of inspiration from that, yeah, and I wanted to do it sort of like the way Greeny done it. And I was lucky enough to go do it in my own way. We both had success. I played in two grand finals, as I said, and got to play at Old Trafford and things like that. But he's someone that I, I lent on in terms of like, right, if, if Greeny can go over as like a middle-aged player, do really well and come back and still have a long career in the NRL, I'll take inspiration from that because I was footy, footy, footy my whole life and I thought I played, I think I played like 40 odd NRL games. I went over and I thought maybe that might be it for me, you know, I might not ever play NRL again, but I drew inspiration from what he did and, and was able to find my way back. Yeah, I, and I think it's a good way because I think the good thing about the English competition is like you play so many games. So many. And they're not as hard like that Easter weekend. Uh, oh, it's like the worst thing ever. They've scrapped it now. Oh, have they? Yeah, because it's crazy, bro. Like <laughs> you play, you play Friday, Sunday, Tuesday. It's like yeah. what? What the fuck? Yeah, well, we played. Uh, yeah, we played three games in seven days one time, and one and we played Wigan. Yeah, pumped us by like fifty. Yeah, it's crazy. Like Easter Monday it was like yeah, tough day. Yeah, but like you cram a lot of games together. There's not the external pressure because obviously results happen. Yeah, you might get booed from the fans, but it's not like on in newspapers. You know, it's all about football. That over was there. another part of my life, bro. I wasn't like paranoid about what people were going to say about me. Like mm. I wasn't worried about if I didn't have the best game in the world or had an incident that I wasn't proud of. I don't know, like a like a high tackle or I did some, it doesn't matter what it is. I wasn't worried about someone writing about it on the back page of a paper. I wasn't worried about people's opinions. I was just worried about playing football and being happy away from football. And it's crazy. Like people tell you that all the time and you go, oh, well, I don't know if it like correlates, but it does. It definitely does. So, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, like I'm happy as Larry up in Newcastle. I played one of my best years in the NRL. So going back to your point about England, though, I'd encourage, all, especially young halves to go over. You learn your craft so much more over there. As you said, you're away from the spotlight. You play in different conditions. Aiden Sees just done an interview, I think, yesterday saying how much he learned about his game. And Sees would be, what, 31 now? Yeah, he'd be so, up there, yeah. So, I mean, if it's helping people like him, then it, it can help anyone. There's Brody of, Croft's over there at the moment. Brody Croft, he yeah. won Man of Steel his first year. He's killing it. Um, on big coin, apparently, too. So, like, fair <laughs> yeah. play to him. Yeah, good Jealous on Jealous as. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, man, I'd encourage all young halves that are stuck behind two or three guys to go for one or two years, learn their craft, and come back a better player. When's the point that you come back, though? Is it person by person? Because I, yeah. I look at Bevan French, and I feel like the game's gotten so much smaller for fullbacks. Yeah. Like, you look at Jaden Campbell, he's yep. not the biggest dude. Crazy. But, like, the way that they move, and I think Bevy's as talented as anyone in the Mate, NRL. I played with Bevy. I've known Bevy for years. I played with him at Wigan. He, he It's crazy. Like, no one can touch him over there, bro. It's <laughs> like watching someone in fast forward. It just hits fast forward, and he just runs around everyone. But he could come back and do a job in the NRL, no doubt, man. But he just signed another four years at Wigan, I think. So. He's one of the highest paid over oh, there, too, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he deserves it, too. Like, he could have won Man of Steel, I reckon, three years in a row. Mm. But he just plays in one of the best sides, so people take points off each other. It's kind of like Nathan at... At Penrith, because yeah. they've got so many players that take points off each other. Dylan Edwards, Jerome, Fisher Harris, all them boys take points off each other. Nathan hasn't won one yet, but... Is, is Dally M Taylor towards a middle-tier team with a good fullback? Oh, I don't know. I don't know, bro. It's hard. It's hard for the good teams that are consistently good because they've got so many good players that take points off each other, pretty much what I just said then, so... Kalen showed that you don't have to be a bad team to win it, though. You just have to be the best player every week, and, and, that's, <laughs> and that's what he was by Country Mile for us, so... Um, he might have broken broken the curse for some people. Um, who's some English guys over there right now that could come down? I know you got a couple yep. at Newcastle right now. Mm. Who's a couple other ones that are over there right now that could come in NRL and make an impact? Because yep. I feel like they're hardly ever backs. Yeah, I know Dom Young's been great. I reckon a guy uh, Jake Wardle that plays for Wigan right now. He's a he's a left centre. He's got mad feet, um, strong, athletic. As an outside back, I reckon he could come cut it. I reckon there's a few guys that leads probably Ash Hanley, who's a winger. 
Harry Newman plays for England. He plays centre for England. Um, Jack Wellsby's a big one that everyone talks about, the fullback for St. Helens. He, um, he's just always on the ball. He can play half, 5'8", but just just super talented kid. I think you would have watched the World Cup yeah, Challenge. Yeah, yeah. He, um, he dominated, really. I think Penrith would be the first to admit he dominated that game. Good kicking game. A guy that I would have loved to have seen come out that's still playing, plays St. Helens too, 5'8", Johnny Lomax. Oh, yeah. I played against him, He's bro. He was good. silk, bro. Like, he just makes the game look easy. Mm. Actually, he reminds me a bit of Normie. Like, cruises around the field, plays at, like, different tempos, but like, always picks always picks the right pass. Uh, Alex Wormsey, I wish he'd come out too. Another one at Saints. Big front row, big six foot six prop. There's heaps, bro, that, like, I reckon if they got given a chance, they could dominate. Uh, Morgan Smith, he's just went to Canberra. He'll probably play lock for them, I reckon. He's a tough kid, like yeah. robust, like just your typical Pommy 13. Good, good skill. They're silky, yeah, the Pommy 13. So boys. skilled. Yeah. And, and in the rain, bro, like they're doing it in the rain. And when you were over there, did they have the steed or did they have the rhinos? They still had the rhinos yeah, when you were playing. Rhino, you couldn't yeah. catch it, bro. <laughs> like it was like playing with Barra. So my first year, I was like, what is this, man? <laughs> now they're smaller, too. Yeah, they? they're shit. So they're with steed now, which is good. But but those, um, a few of those English boys, like if they got a hold of it, yeah, good mate, luck. Every English half in that I've ever seen can kick a ball. That's because they grow up playing soccer. Yeah, right? a lot football. of them are in academies until they're like thirteen or fourteen, and then realise that oh, a lot of money in it. But there's so many talented football or soccer players over there, and then they go to rugby league and like Danny Bruff, one of Man of Steel, just kicking teams to death, bro. <laughs> yeah. he just, he's just sitting <laughs> behind the rock, just yeah. pointing blokes around, <laughs> just kicking to death, forty twenties <laughs> field goals, L- lippy ass. Bro, they make me yeah. laugh. Some of the English boys, they'll kick, they'll be up like I don't know. They'll be up by like 30 and they'll just go for a field goal from halfway and kick it and just jog back like like it's a good play. Just go score another try, bro. <laughs> Danny Ruff, I played against him. Yeah. Yeah, he was good. He was yeah, good. He was a good player. But um, yeah, like there's so many players I reckon if they got given a chance to come over, they'd thrive. But um, So I, I always, like we used to say this about the West Tigers where they're like, oh, they should go target. Because they're hard. it's hard to sell West Tigers to people that live here and yep. obviously you would come back there mm. but I feel like that should have been the game plan kind of what Newcastle's done now you got KP who's on one point whatever and you go to England and get some up and coming juniors and yep. then you get someone like a Dom Young come through yep. is that the path you see for English players coming down I think Canberra ways? did that as well they Canberra had, sorry Canberra the they best. obviously had Jackie White and Papa Lee and boys like that, that they built the club around and they went for the English boys that and that's the there. other part too like you live in Sydney you go let's go play for Canberra you're like Oh, that's a long winter. And well, well, it's easy for clubs. Well, it should be easier for the Sydney clubs or clubs like Newcastle that are on the on the coast that English boys are from like Bradford, Leeds, Hull. Manchester, yeah. Hull, and it's pissing down rain twenty four seven. They come here and they live on the beach. Like the, like Kai Pierce Paul that's with us now. I can't believe he's lucky. He just he's on the beach every day. Because that's what I mean. Newcastle's not a tough sell for someone in England. Nah, nah. It's, it's, as long as the footy's good, like it's it's one of the best places in in the world to play. I reckon Newcastle. Like out of all the teams I've been at, like obviously the Roosters, with the financial backing, the the history, like how good they always are. One of the best clubs in the comp by a country mile. When you play for Manly, same thing big club live on the beach and then you go to Newcastle it's like this when you're winning it is easily the best place to play you get 30,000 a game you live on the beach slow slow lifestyle away from football you get to know some you make uh you meet people that have businesses good relationships that they can help you with life after footy so I mean yeah the English thing's crazy like our two boys Kai Pierce Paul and Will Price they're going to be real good players I think Kai six foot seven can offload at will they single they're single. They um, <laughs> are they single. Single. Just, just yeah. half of just ask half of the ladies in Newcastle on Instagram. Yeah, I think um, I think the boys. I think the boys do alright anyway. Yeah, I'm sure they do. I, I'm 28 now, so I stay away from them conversations. <laughs> I um, I live my life through them anyway. Put it that way. <laughs> As the older boys do. Yeah, they? yeah. I'm, I'm the fourth oldest, I think. So I can't believe that. Eh? How quick life goes, bro. But um, yeah, they've got some good war stories. Um, so your five eight position. Is it up for grabs? Because I watched uh, Tyson Gamble play last year and I saw Tyson Gamble as an effort player. Yeah. Someone who sort of moulds his game similar to like a Josh Reynolds. Yeah. But I, th- I watched last year and he started to develop like a bit of tempo. Yeah. I remember he got like a charge down, like just slowing up. Yeah. Just stuff that probably comes natural to you but takes time for other people. Mm. But as a half, I really started to appreciate the growth in this game. Yeah. Yeah. So when I first saw it at Newcastle, um, KP was obviously going to be the six. So the whole game plan to start was just play on the footy Essentially, when KP wants to give it to him, and then um, we end up signing Lockie Miller, who was like that Tedesco type for the middle, plenty of runs, plenty of effort. But we wanted KP on the end of all the shapes for obvious reasons that he ices nine times out of ten. Yeah. When he went down, we were lucky that me and so K hurt his calf last preseason and was out for uh, 
I don't want to put GST on it, five to six weeks. Like he did, he was off feet with a, with a bad calf. And me and Tyson got six weeks of reps together. And um, the moment I stood on the field with him, I knew that I was going to get effort, defense, competitiveness, would chase kicks, do all the hard shit. And then after four weeks, um, we were having spine meetings and he was running the meetings. And oh, I didn't sick. realize how smart he was, bro. Like people look at Tyson and he has a mullet. He's out there. He speaks his mind. But he's a very smart, intelligent footy player, bro. And then with Greeny overseeing our attack, he developed tempo. Um, he threw like three or four peaches to Dom Young last year. Like mm. He got out the back of shape, played direct. They line claps 15-metre long board of the winger. His kicking game's like more than sound, real good kicker of the football. And if you add those two things with the competitive nature in his defence, he, his game went from – like at Brisbane, he was part-time. He's a genuine six in the NRL now. There's mm. no, no mistake about it. And then – We've got Cogs there as well. And you, you aren't you aren't small too. He's a big dude. He's a big boy. He'd and I was surprised how big you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fat. I'm fat. <laughs> he um his his body fat's like two percent, Tyson. He's um he's in good shape, man. He he'd be six he'd be six two, I reckon. Yep. Um I don't know his exact measurements. I should know. He sits right next to me in the locker and doesn't <laughs> shut up. But um yeah, he's a he's a big boy and uh, he throws his body around too and yeah, I'm not small too, but like in saying that, we've got no excuse to miss tackles on the edge too. No, so when you have big. Fafita in that run that year and you miss, everyone's looking at you like, come on, bro, you should tackle him. <laughs> like it's heaps easy. Yeah, you tackle him. But then we've got Cogs as well, who's brought another dimension. Like he he can play six and seven. Uh, I think he switched his game up really well. Everyone talks about the grand final, but I look at the games like before that when he had to jump in and he had to, seven, yeah, yeah, he had to play seven. But then sometimes when uh, Jerome dominates the game and you have to play second fiddle on, on like those long shapes and you have Yo for the middle, He's good at the back of that second layer too. So he's taught me a fair bit. Um, he has, he's had to learn our system, but he's also brought what he learned at Penrith, which is a pretty good breeding ground for, for halves learning off Nathan and Ivan. So It's just nice and direct, eh? Like, he plays square. He knows his game. What, what Cogs does really well is he knows what he's really good at mm. and he nails that. And um, Yeah, he's a great runner with the footy too. I didn't realise how good of a runner he was. Like when the middles are lazy, he's got a nice little right foot, gets him behind him, got a really good kicking game too. So... Yeah, the halves battles, the halves battles, well and truly on. I think for all of us, and I think, I think the best thing about it is we're all all accountable. Uh, we all have to get along first and foremost, but we all need to put the the best interest of the team first. And I've really enjoyed that for the preseason. I didn't do the first part of it and watch those two battle in the left and rights and and stuff like that. Now, when we all get a crack in left v right, you can tell all three boys are competing, and it's bringing out the best in not only like us as players but the whole team. So mm. yeah, it's going to be interesting uh, which way it goes. But and when you're on the other side on defending too, are you like fuck? Let's yeah. get a stop here. I always go to the back row. Make sure you suck him. Make sure you suck him. <laughs> hey, jam that, jam that. Yeah. But, uh, me and me and Tyson are quite funny, man. It got quite competitive towards the end of the year. We're winning, we're winning games by forty, and then we'd go to train on Tuesday and. It's like me, me and you were going at it kind of thing. We don't say that, but like he'll come up with a great play. I'll get beat or like I'll go on a loop play and then Dom will step, step me and score. And then he's going, yeah, great play. And I'm just going, fuck, I've got to get him back. And yeah. my whole my whole game was to get him back. So that certainly brought out the best in both of us. And um, I've been loving that, the competitive battle so far. Um, yeah, your, your coach obviously was under a bit of pressure, maybe, I don't know, last little period. Yeah. What's he like? Legend, mate. Legend. He's got a tough exterior. Um, he looks real tough and, and uh, brash, I guess you could say, but he's such a caring person, man. As I said, I, I don't want to go back into too much of myself, but the mental health, health journey I'm on, I wouldn't be on it without Adam pushing me to, to go do that. And he didn't do that from a place of like, you need to get help. He just wanted the best for me. And if that was going to be the best for me, he was there backing me. But the care he has for the players, I think um, every single player in our squad can can speak for the fact that he knows them on a personal basis, has events at his house, loves the partners being involved. And when it comes to coaching, he's just no nonsense. He, you know what he expects from you and he's the first to pat you on the back when you nail that job. So I love being coached by him. I think the coaches like him and Madge, I'll use Madge because I've had him too, have that real hard exterior where people look at him and go, oh, you see angry but really they're the most loving guys bro <laughs> yeah. like they're, they're fun to joke around like a few of the para boys have told me about brad arthur he's similar like real real like man's man coach he's really cool yeah, yeah real cool you. and and that's exactly like adzie o'brien like everyone in our squad respect him because 
um, yeah, he's hard on us, but he's the first one to put his arm around us and pat us on the back too. So I love being coached by him. Mm. Oh, Trent Robinson, you're under him for a bit. Yeah. I didn't realise how smart he was yeah. until I had a conversation with him. And at the time, um, Mitchell Pierce was actually playing for Newcastle. Yeah. And it was the first time he broke down the spine with the 13 that was attached to me. Yeah. And uh, Kyle Flanagan had just left and I asked the question. I was like, oh, what happened there? And because one of his passing 13s had gone, he had to make a bit more plays on that right edge yeah. and like couldn't see it as clear as they had hoped. Yep. So they'd let him go through that. But what, what he said about Newcastle was, because we're going to go play Newcastle, he goes, Junior touches the ball 26% of the time at first receiver. So it's easy to read Newcastle's because we just throw Tedesco in the halfway and throw everyone on the up. Yep. And he uh, like he said that in like two minutes. I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. He's at that level. Well, when, when I first met him, my first ever meeting, um, we sat in a, a room and he said to me, oh, I didn't just say to me, he said to the team, right, I, I, want, I want you to know the dimensions of the field. So, like, what's this post to the corner post? How many metres is that? I don't know what it is. I, sh I should know because he, he told us. And then he goes, black dot to the corner post. How how wide is a field full What is that, length? 36? So, 72 is the width. Uh, what's, yeah. what's a field 72? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, it's something yeah. like that. And he wanted us to know all the dimensions. And then he gave us a diagram, him and Fitzy, of your position, where, how many metres off the sideline you should be like stood if they're on your 40, your 30, your 20. You, they're coming out of trouble. Like, he breaks the game down to a T so if you don't get your job right he's giving you all the info you go in the video and you're like were you 27 metres off the soil on there no no I was 28 well you need to be 27 you would have stopped it is it that detailed it's that detailed it? man wow. and that's why like yeah that's why he produces so many good players like I know he's had good teams but he's produced some real good kids coming through there like what he done for Victor Radley's game like Vic, Vic I played 20s with Victor and he was always like fly at the line smack blokes do, do mad stuff like that but his tempo with the footy is he could play halfback if he wanted, I reckon. Mm. Like, literally wear number seven. He might get sent off for hitting back rolls higher, but um, his ball playing's elite, man. Like, I love watching him. His catch on contact and, like, going right into the teeth, copping a whack for his mate and the way he plays with Jared and Lindsay Collins and moves them around the field. It's like it's like chess for him. And then defensively, he just bullet a gate. So, I love watching him play, man. I hate playing against him, but I love watching oh, him play. Oh, yeah, he'd be the worst to play against. What about their back line this year? Oh, Land yeah. of the Giants. Oh, I know. They're all like six. Like, Joey would be the shortest, wouldn't he? He'd be yeah, like six and, and three. And he's six just four. got the best feet of all time and one yeah. of the best defensive centers. <laughs> yeah, and he just palm you. Scary side. Good side, man. I've got nothing but respect for him, man. They they, they always sign well. People want to go there for, for, for obvious the, reasons. Yeah. You're a chance of winning the comp every year. And, and you get you live in Bondi. <laughs> yeah, live in Bondi. Live in the East. Get coached by Robbo. It's... Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. So pretty exciting start to the year. Obviously, with, with Vegas happening, you got a New York Knicks on <laughs> shirt on. Are you a fan of Knicks? I don't go for the Knicks. No. Oh, okay. I'm a I'm a LeBron guy. I'm a LeBron guy. Oh, okay. I just follow him. Uh, American hat on. Yeah, I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm Americanized today. I know. <laughs> I should wear a Vegas tee. Just really ramped it up. <laughs> just a little promo. Get the Knights over there next year. <laughs> uh, what's your thoughts on uh, rugby league going to like, yeah, Vegas? Sick. Yeah, sick. Oh, I'm I'm jealous. Uh, like, uh, it's going to be cool to watch uh, the four teams go over and play and playing Vegas I don't know a few teams are starting in LA I think and then moving up to Vegas and stuff like that too it just it took me back from when uh, one of my first years at the Roosters we played in the UK against St. Helens and went to Dubai for a week then the UK for a week and then come home so like that whole thing's sick man and it's an experience that none of those boys will ever forget too and if it brings more eyeballs to, to our game, then then the more the merrier. I'm sure there's so many athletes in America that would love to play rugby league without the helmet and the pads and I'm sure there'd be a lot of good uh, centers and wingers over there that would eventually want to come and play. <laughs> yeah, like, for sure. That's that's the one I was thinking about. Like all the talented athletes that probably don't make like NFL. Yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting if they all come down and start like, playing football. Watching the Super Bowl, like blokes like Brock Purdy. Um, Brock Purdy. He, he'd he'd probably be a good halfback. Christian <laughs> Christian Christian McCaffrey, like him playing anywhere on the field in rugby league, he'd be tortured. Debo Samuel. Big Travis Kelsey, my boy. Imagine him playing back row or something like that, just throwing him the ball and letting him do his thing. But there's so many cool athletes and different body shapes that would come over here and do well, I reckon, if they were coached the did right you, way. Did you see the McCaffrey content recently this week when he's talking about his dad during high school? Oh, yeah, yeah. How he that made him get on the IV and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, funny enough, I was, um, my missus blew up me the other night. I, she goes, What are you doing? It's bed. Like, we're, like, I'll go to bed at a certain time every night. But I was that fascinated by the way he trained. I was watching this video of him, like, swimming and doing all this weird fundamental movement stuff like you can tell why he's such a like he's been blessed with his parents obviously being phenomenal athletes and like didn't fall far from the tree but they work so hard man and they're just built different i reckon the american athletes they're crazy
Hey, do you see us sort of taking on, we were sort of talking about a little bit before about like my, my off season was, I used to go get on the piss for six to eight weeks. <laughs> yeah. Like, and everyone's so much more professional. I was so much cooler. Do yeah. you see that Americanized professionalism coming down here? I reckon with the influence of like people going to Bill Knowles as well, like obviously he's over there and they're going for like rehabbing certain injuries. But I think the influence of like, I think there's been like six or seven boys that have gone over there with physios, which is ultimately going to bring back sort of that, that training to, to the club naturally that the players just come from. But I love the way that they individualize their training programs. Obviously they have to, they don't have to do the 9K field sessions, the MAS runs and stuff like that. They don't have to wrestle. They don't have to do things like that. But I think it will get to a point in the NRL where it's individualized a lot more. There'll be a lot more like one-on-one -on -one coaching for uh, position groups and, and doing stuff like that. We do stuff like that now, obviously with kick catch and forwards will go practice certain plays and wrestling and stuff like that. But I think it'll get to a point where Oh, this will be way, way after I'm gone, but like halfbacks will have to be a certain build. They'll have to be able to do certain things. Like a quarterback, they want their quarterback to be able to see over the O-line, be able to throw a certain distance, move in the pocket, things like that. I think it'll get to that eventually, but yeah, I don't know. It'd be good if we didn't have to do MAS runs now. They're, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're hard work. Preseason's <laughs> over, thank God. So Yeah, I don't know. Um, like I remember, like I was over football and we'd done a wrestling session with Sebes and it was like one of the first <laughs> oh, yeah. sessions there. And I was like, after that, I was like, nah, this ain't it for me. Like I already checked out. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> sometimes definitely at three o'clock in the hour when you got to go tackle <laughs> uh, the SAF brothers and things like that, it, it, it gets a bit testy. But um, <laughs> when you love the game, when you love the game, you know you got to do it and ultimately you got to be able to tackle on the field. So it does help. Um, obviously, obviously seen you in the past and like bouncing around and like you've always been kind to me in DMs and yep. seen you over there with Daniel Patrick. Is yep. there outside of business and sports something that you're interested in? Yeah. I, I, pay, got, I feel like you pay attention to a lot of things. Yeah, bro. Like I've, I've watched a lot of your stuff. Um, I think what you're doing in the space with the NRL boys, I think a lot more people are taking notice of it. Obviously, watch your content at Penrith. I think that's really cool for... I think players respect people that have gone before him and then are venturing to something else like yourself louis brown are the two that come to mind obviously i got to play with louis at manly when earls was just a dream and now it's obviously he's clubbing with asics and doing mm. cool cool shit like that so respect to both of you guys but yeah the business side is something that bro i don't know that much about like i wouldn't be able to step out of football right now and go straight into it but it's something that i'd be willing to learn for sure like funny enough like Dan the daniel patrick thing like uh, uh, i don't want to i don't want to misquote him he'll probably dm me after this but i think his mum went out with my dad <laughs> so like that's yeah, yeah so yeah. like it's it's could have been brothers man shout out to the shout out to my old man forget <laughs> forget it done but um yeah i got to spend some time with him in america got to cruise around with him see how like that was cool been, eh? yeah, yeah sick yeah. bro like just took me in his car showed me parts of la which is, which is crazy i never thought i got to do that but it's something that like i've always thought about doing but have never had probably the the courage to step out of my comfort zone and, and get involved in it but um when you see people that have played the game at the highest level and um, then have gone on to create something like this for themselves, it's um, pretty inspiring, I guess, for the next generation. And I, but blokes like I always look at blokes like KP and, and wonder like I wonder what he's going to do after football. But he's he's had little things that have have started, and then he's probably just put on the back burner because he hasn't needed it. But um, I think those seminars that you're doing at clubs and stuff, I think we'll get a lot more people interested and in wanting to do stuff like this after footy for sure. Yeah, thanks, bro. But like, a big one for me, bro, is like I always find like people, and I won't say his name on, I remember we were out for a dinner one time and he was a good player yep. and um, he didn't pick up a contract the next year and yep. we are at dinner, it was like me, Way, Chico, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And he's just like, oh, I come in blind after a day's work and he's oh, hey, my name's X. You yep. won't remember me anyway because I don't play NRL anymore. Yeah, right. And I, I just remember that like so clearly. That self-worth like, thing. Yeah, that's yeah. all is all is like I said in that speech all his self worth was attached just, just just being a football player Yeah. so and for me I was the opposite like I played football but I wasn't necessarily in love with it yeah. I was like carrying around cameras basically what KP does now but he's made it yeah. cool I was doing that but getting paid <laughs> yeah. but getting paid out for it like I still struggle with that like um, if you don't play well on the weekend or you, your self esteem is bad because you haven't played well you want to play well but you also carry around like oh I'm a footy player I've got to play well every week so I'm 28 and I'm still learning to deal with that. Yeah. But I reckon for me, it's definitely something in the next couple of years that I want to take a lot more serious, getting into something away from football that can actually occupy my time away from the game. Like I put so much into, I want to train well every day, I need to eat well, I need to be this certain weight, I want to be able to tackle, I want to do all this stuff, I want to nail my video, but I'd love to be able to step away from the game and be like, all right, I want to focus on creating this or being a part of this brand or, you know, you know what I mean? Do something away from football, so... 
Um, if anyone out there is watching that needs a, <laughs> <laughs> nah, but no, nah, it's certainly something I'm interested in for sure. Uh, I heard you say nail video. What's what, how important is that to you? Because I I know you follow Baker yeah. Mayfield. Is he your guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you relate to him a bit? Oh, a little bit, a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Is, is that why he's your guy? I remember watching him in college uh, when he went off the rails a little bit. I remember like I first saw him on YouTube when he um, put the flag I in that, the field, yeah. and then he got uh, arrested, and then he grabbed the crotch and. I'm like, oh, I was going for a period of my life where I was a bit like that. Like I was, I was rude out there, obnoxious. And then to see his transformation in terms of like, now he's a respectful guy, got a kid on the way, married, his teammates love him. I can sort of draw inspiration from that. He's bounced around clubs, wasn't really rated. And then now all of a sudden he'll probably, oh, I listen to a lot of talk shows in America. He's probably going to get 25 mil a year, you know what I mean? Which is, which is epic for him. But yeah, I, I'd consider him my boy. I, I'd yeah. love to meet Bake. <laughs> Bake show, baby. Because when I see you post him, I was like, oh. And like, um, I, I related to a guy in a football called Arian Foster. Yep. And like he, he at the same time, I think we get snapped our Achilles around the same time. Right. And I remember him speaking and I was like influenced by the way he read an article. Yep. And I just like, he was he was kind of like my guy. He wasn't like the best player or anything. Yeah. But I just used to love the way he articulated himself. Yeah, they don't have to be the best. Oh, that's, that's like what I tell people. They don't have to be the best player. I reckon if you were relate to someone um and you're a fan of him you just like i follow his story so closely bro like i love what like he was doing too many commercials and he come out and said i got to stop the commercials and <laughs> i just i just watch him bro and like i just love seeing people that obviously because it's a part of my journey i love watching people that have sort of put themselves in position to fail and then they climb out of that and they succeed like you got to love a good comeback story so yeah um is football your favorite sport outside of Regularly. The NFL, yeah, yeah, yeah that and basketball, but it's so big, eh? Like I, I look at, oh, I've been watching, I follow like front office sports and yep. all the ones that cross between business and sports. But the amount of views that they get, yeah, um, like even Super Bowl, even like the normal round games get like seventeen million views yeah. per game. Yeah, like our whole NRL final series got thirteen point two. Yeah, right. Like just the level that the it's numbers, at, man. it's it's so cool. And just yeah, I've, I think the NFL season's so short too. It's so easy to lock in on. Whereas basketball, like I love LeBron. Like LeBron's my favorite athlete of all time. Um, I try and watch as many games as I can, but because there's so many teams playing on so many nights, there's so many games, then you've got seven game series, it's hard to like fully invest yourself in it. Whereas the NFL, bro, like red zone every Monday, get up at four o'clock, watch that. And then you've got the, uh, the the Monday and Tuesday games, obviously Saturday, Sunday over there, Sunday, Monday, sorry, with them over there, where it's, it's pretty cool to lock in on. And they're, just, you, they're relatable in terms of like what they do, like they tackle, they run, but they're just such great athletes too. And you can draw inspiration from a lot of people like that. I love their stories too, like, Mahomes' story now, watching that quarterback series, like that was that sick was to sicker, watch. Yeah. To watch different types of people too. Like you had one guy that was in and out of the, the team. You had Kirk Cousins who highest paid quarterback, but you know, was a family man and like was just within himself. Then you had Mahomes who's arguably one of the greatest yeah. players of all time who lives in like a house worth 20 million. It's pretty cool. Yeah, um, were, were you tagged in that Caesar's Palace? Yeah, one? it's sick, bro. It caught me off guard, actually. Because uh, like it would be interesting. Because like I said, like everyone's got a preconceived notion of you. Yeah, It'd yeah. be interesting to see behind the scenes. People would want to watch it for for all sorts of reasons. It's like when, <laughs> when people watch McGregor fight, they want to yeah. see him get knocked out. I think people would want to watch me get smoked too. But um, I, I remember messaging him like, um, if he if he goes to the NRL, but I'll, I'll sit there and back him. I don't think it will happen, obviously, but like. To do something like that, especially if you had someone at the top of it like Nathan, it's going to drag eyeballs regardless of who else is in it. But to get something behind the scenes of someone, I think that you've done it a few times when you were vlogging, um, getting the boys behind the scenes, but haven't been able to constantly do it. Like the way the quarterback did it, they were getting every aspect of their life in it, like 24-7 around the clock. I reckon that'd be pretty cool. The player would have to be open to it as well because it's invasion of privacy. Like you're doing everything with a like a camera so close to you in your face, you know what I mean? So... Yeah, I'd be open it's to got, it. It's got legs, eh? That, yeah, that definitely. Show. And Volandis is the type of guy that I reckon he'd want to he'd go after something like that too. And if someone could propose something cool that makes sense financially for the NRL, I reckon I reckon that'd be on board. Uh, you sort of talked about the NFL having a shorter season. Do you reckon there's something viable for for rugby league? I think, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I love playing the game, bro. So like, I actually don't mind playing playing the 28 rounds or 26 rounds with two buys. It does it does get taxing on the body, obviously. And then you got the boys that play Origin in the middle of the year. You can understand why they have a bit of a down period. Some of them like they're they're up so high, they make rep footy, they're up again, and then they got to come back to club footy. I can see how hard that is, but I reckon they'll get to a point. It depends on the concussion thing. Obviously, they're still doing a lot of research on that. I reckon that could be the biggest factor in maybe shortening the season. The more concussions, the more people we lose to the game through that. I reckon that could change it. But as I said, I'm a lover of the game, bro. So. 
the more the more the merrier for me. <laughs> Push it out to yeah, thirty six. Yeah. Make it forty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, conferences. What's your thoughts on uh, if we had conferences? Oh yeah, yeah, I actually don't mind that. Eh? I like the idea of that too. You play your conference twice, twice. And, and everyone the, else once. Yeah, yeah, the winner goes through, and then seeds and stuff like that. I reckon people like. I think the purists in our game don't want to see change. Like I'm massive for um, names on the back of the jerseys. I know with sponsors and that, they get first dibs. They're putting a lot of money into the clubs. But also like how proud you are of wearing your name on your back. I think that's got that's got legs. And then, yeah, conferences will be sick, bro. I'd, I'd, I'm all for that. Yeah, because I, I see it this way. And I like we talked about this a couple of years ago. And like say GI was playing. Yeah. And so you play a conference twice, home and away. And obviously those are all the best games. So it'd yeah. be like the Western Sydney conference would be the big conference right yeah. now. But the other part was like, say if KP is playing at Suncorp, yeah. One year, you won't be able to see him at some court for another two years. Yep. So you'll be more inclined to go watch the game while he's there. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. he's probably going to play Origin and shit like that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I always saw it like that to it build a, a fan experience. Idea. It is a sick idea, bro. And then, like, obviously, if you're the number one seed, you get the week off. It makes the final series fair because then you get the week off, then you play at home all the way to the grand final as well. So, yeah, I reckon that's got legs, eh? I like that. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't really thought about it, but I don't know how that would – how would you split up, like – you obviously got the three Queensland sides. Who do you put as the – just Probably Melbourne because they've got the history with. Um, oh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, with Cameron Smith. A lot of trouble Smith. though for them though. Yeah, that's true. I oh, know, but I reckon that's sick though. I, I do like that idea the more I think about it. The hard thing now, we've got 17 teams, so it's going to be oh, like. Yeah. It was all right when we had 16 because it was like 4 4 4. It yeah, broke up perfectly. Maybe you wait for 18 and then. Oh, yeah. I don't know how you split it, but. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like it. Drafts. <laughs> Let's just dive into this American sports. Do you reckon we have, oh, the thing? The only thing that I don't know about drafts is: do we have enough kids coming out of like uh, high school to have a genuine draft? Do you reckon? Like, yeah, uh, maybe you push it up like a little bit wider. The hard thing was it'd be like a team like Penrith, who's developed all their juniors, yeah, exactly. And like all those guys are getting sniped. I had a coffee with uh, Bryce Cartwright, and yep. obviously 2013, it was the Bryce Cartwright Freak. show in the 20s, yeah. and we had a look at who came last that year who would pick him up and it was actually like Parramatta. Oh, right. Yeah, so like I, I, I just think it would be... Well, the AFL know. do it, eh? Yeah, AFL do it. Yeah. So I reckon if the AFL can do it, and I know more people in Australia like widely play AFL, especially in Melbourne, but I reckon if you took their model, that seems to work too. So, I mean, I think um, over the course of that person, whoever goes number one's career, they have a chance to change a club as well, which is pretty cool. Like if Nathan... For argument's sake, no one knew how good he was going to be, but say he landed at a team that um, hadn't gone so well and then he's winning grand finals for them, that could change the trajectory of their whole club too. So mm. we, we don't want to lose – I don't think we want to lose the fabric of what makes the NRL the NRL, but we've also got to change with the times, I reckon. And I think with someone like Peter Volandis at the top who's a, like – he improvises a fair bit. I actually like the way he... It's cowboy. Yeah, yeah I, like the way, I like the way he attacks things and he backs himself and he's been great for the players and like we got the deal over the line and things like that too. So I reckon if someone went to him with a genuine plan that made sense financially and, and business-wise, I reckon we could we could make that happen, eh? Yeah, because I think it would be cool to obviously like track the next gen coming through because they do a great in like high school and obviously college football is a beast in its own and the amount of money that comes in through that. But I think it would be cool if we had like Jackson Hastings from like... Wollongong yeah. five star recruit like you know yeah there's a kid in Brisbane now that oh bro like I've randomly started watching a bit of him I think I don't want to say his name wrong it's either Cody or Kobe Black have you heard much about nah, him nah nah I, I read an article about him a year ago saying it's going to be Adam Reynolds successor which he, he was 16 maybe 17 and then I watched him like because the Broncos were playing I saw his name on the team list in like 21 and I'm I'm like oh, I'm going to watch this kid play and then in the trials you're like oh yeah this this kid can play bro like, <laughs> like he's actually like they're not just saying he's going to be the next, the next big thing. Like he looks like he's got the goods. So, even as a player now, still playing in the NRL, I like watching young kids come through and, and dominate. The ones with the big wraps that have all the pressure on them that come through and, and live that's up to cool, the hype. Eh? It's sick, man. I love mm. that. And it's like the LeBron thing. Like there's yeah. probably no athlete ever that's had as much pressure. And yeah. obviously, we're not. We don't got the market for USA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool watching. Like the Nathan Cleary story. If that was documented from. So when he was 15, 16. Like or even younger for, when he was at the Warriors, bro. Like yeah. running around being the ball boy for the Warriors. Like that'd be epic to watch that back. But And even like listen to Ivan talk about, because playing New Zealand, all the, all the Islander boys are huge. Like yep. Nathan played soccer to he was like 13 or something. Yeah, right. Because... And then he would only play against people his own size. Yeah, right. And I was playing against men when I was like 13. And my dad was my coach and he used to just throw me out on the wing. Yeah, yeah. And like, I just, you know, you spend three years not tackling and you come into like well, junior I'll, Kiwis. I still do and, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was trying to, he, like, obviously he was trying to do me a favor because yeah. you're playing against men. But yeah. it actually like fucks your development. 
Were you small, like not being smart ass, were you small as a kid? Yeah, I was, I was like small and we were on halves. But the other, I was talking to some of the Warriors coaches. The hard thing about playing in New Zealand is like, because you play behind such big packs, yep. even up to your 20s, like by the time you get to first grade, you, you've never really got into an arm wrestle yeah, yeah, where right. you've had to kick out at like your 30 or yeah. 40. Like, and obviously South Coast is a strong competition yeah, growing yeah. up and they talk like it's NRL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but you, learn, you learn how to play football properly, especially as a half. Yeah, yeah. And like, I was lucky enough that we, I went to school and Matty had was our was our coach Matty Head was a pretty He's a good player hunter. bro I played him back in the day and then I when I went into 20s I Justin Holbrook was my head coach bro I had Benny Hornby Dean Young like we had oh, a lot sheesh. of yeah, Sowie when I was in uh, Harold Matt Sowie was our, our kicking coach and, and things like that so I was lucky that I had like a lot of ex NRL players or NRL players at the time like giving me information and um the best thing about Sowie and I, I've got a good relationship with Sowie he's always helped me and followed me from my career that he's just honest that's one thing I respect about him. He won't just tell you what you want to hear. He, he, I remember we were doing a kicking session, me and Adam Clooney with him one day, and Clooney kicked, Clooney kicked the bad one, and so we're like 17, so he's like, nap shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just yeah. To a 17 year old kid, but. Um, it definitely helped us in the long run, both of us. Um, so how we helped my kicking game because, like, at training, I could like it was weird. You watch Sowie kick at training, and he like he didn't look like the best kicker. Yeah, like the, the spin on the ball wasn't always amazing. But yeah. you get him in the game, and you're up by eight. Like he can I kick, kick you to a death, win. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he taught me like a lot about kicking. Like the first thing he taught me was like try and get the ball in your hands as quick as possible. Yeah. So you start close to the nine. Obviously, you have your block player there and like yeah. move move on the up. Yeah. Where I was catching wide and trying to, and because I didn't have a big kick, yeah. I was just trying to kick direct and like through the line. Yeah. And I always found myself under pressure. And that one little thing like helped me so much. Did you kick on the left or the right? I was right. I'm right footed. Yeah. See, I I I, uh, like I played a lot of footy last year on the left and trying to get a good kick. Obviously, being right footed in the mark, coming at your right legs hard. And yeah. I um, got to play with Jim Maloney and he was on the left and he was he was so good at catch, drop straight away and, and nailed his kicks. Like, but Roosters only do one kick, it's that bomb, eh? That's all they do. Well, well this year, I reckon they'll just kick for the winger, <laughs> yeah. as, you, as you would. Like, if you had Dom Young and Toops on, on either side. I remember when I was at the Roosters, like, I like, and I was obviously big on reading comments. I used to get criticised for just kicking for Toops. Yeah. But what, Toops and Skids? Like, you're going to kick for those two. They're freaks in the air, you know what I mean? And then... I watched Jimmy and Piercy kick and they would like kick early for Jenko and people like that. And so it makes you think like, don't just use your big guys up, use these quick guys in and around the rock and kick for kick for the other half and things like that too. Yeah, Jenko would be probably the best grubber chaser ever, ever. isn't he? Well, they're trying the grand final, bro. I'll still watch it and go, what? Yeah, he's so like, rapid. That was epic. Yeah, yeah, they... um. You look at the, you look at the Roosters game now and obviously like Kerry and Walker, they're not like the Swedish strikers of the ball. Mm. They didn't get like... Comparing to Burden and Nath, oh, yeah. what they're doing in Reynolds, like they yep. can land it on the spot, but float it, yeah, spin it. And it, you watch their kicking game, like they don't have the massive kick, so mm. it feels like you just put everyone under pressure. I think they dominate, I think they just dominate through field position, uh, through their pack, first and foremost. Their pack's aggressive, obviously, Jared, Lindsay, Brandon Smith at nine, and then, and then Rads, and then they've got some great edges. Obviously, Satili got injured last year, but they've got Siwa Wong and people like that coming through, the Butcher Brothers. I just reckon with their back five and the way Tedesco carries the ball, they're, they're over halfway most of the time anyway, so you don't need to have a big kick. The only time you really need to have a big kick is when like, you, you're on your 30, 40, and you need to mm. really give it some. Like I reckon Mitch is probably, like, apart from Burton's obviously torpy that's out of this world ridiculous I, th I reckon Mitch Moses has got the best like long clean pure strike consistently it is a, yeah it is a nice strike too and he jumps too yeah so he's you smart can't touch you him. can't hit him yeah. like you run past him and you want to get a piece and you have to get out of the way but um, <laughs> like for someone that kicks him weird Ch Cherry kicks him like different but he kicks him long he's torpy like flat and long's good Reynolds is Reynolds is arguably the best like the Swedish striker like Every kick it he can effortless, do, isn't it? Oh, it looks mad. Like, yeah. I love watching him. Yeah, kick. like uh, like I always think of like Cherry's kicks, and obviously he's now the forty twenty one. But yeah. like it's kind of like a high drop, double release, and around the corner. No one else could kick like him. Yeah, I agree. So I like agree. when I was there, um, we'd do drills where like you'd kick through the cones and get a repeat set. Like he holds it like funny, and it looks like oh, what's he going to do? He nails it every time. He's the best. Um, Reynolds is the best kicking a grubber straight on for his back row. Cherry's the best at like threading it through the line. Yeah. Like a lot, you see a lot of players, like myself included, hit legs all the time, and you're thinking, fuck, how's this not going through? And then you watch him play, and they always go through. They and always like, fit the line. Yeah, he, he tried to break it down in like coaching points for me when I was there. He goes, like, like start tight, as soon as you get it, go straight across the line. Yeah. And he goes, you, the, the hole will open, you just plug it through. Oh, it's just and that I, easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll get the ball, and I'm like, 
fuck was this hole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. what <laughs> I was he talking about? Yeah, and obviously, like when you go in sideways, you can shake the ball so it spins. Yeah, and he goes like, Joey taught me that, and I was like, God, oh, just Reynolds is so can't impressive. See it, man. <laughs> Reynolds is so impressive because he kicks literally straight through the line where all, everyone's legs are, and he yeah. doesn't miss either. So, yeah, there's there's players that are just like gifted, like the way they strike the ball is just different to everyone else. Um, Stacey Jones taught me one thing when I was a little bit younger, which helped me was like, you know, like if you're trying to kick through the line, especially straight on, yeah. like that guy puts his leg out and the next guy puts his leg out. And if they put their arms out, it makes like a diamond. Yeah, Does that right. make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he goes, change the height of your- Lower ball drop? Yeah. Oh, no. Nah, he said like, kick it up higher because it goes through that yeah, right. gap. And oh, I was yeah, like, that oh, sense. that's interesting. Well, Brett Kamali did that too. Yeah, he was he used king. to fly down and make the tackle. It was hilarious. <laughs> when, he was there, when he was the interim coach at Tigers, man, he'd come do a bit of kick catch with us like- when he was kicking to me, I just picture him like kicking it, and then like in the back of my mind, picture him just chasing down the field and making the tackle. <laughs> yeah, not to make little, me laugh, bro. <laughs> with his little feet, he's got feet this big, Doddy. So it's yeah, pretty it's funny. Doing right to hit him, eh? Yeah. I remember um, when I used to watch him play. When I first started paying attention to football, was when Melbourne come in, yeah. and my dad was my coach, and he's like, "You need to play half like this." And I was watching him. He touched the ball like five times a set. His career is so underrated, bro. Like everyone remembers that moment in Origin and likes to bring that up, but like. He was keeping Joey out of playing. Yeah, no, nah, that's why I don't like him, man, because he was keeping Joey out. I know, but like, so that, that's my theory about you got to get the best players on the field and then you just got to figure it out from there, you know yeah. what I mean? I know Joey probably hated playing nine, but I think his career turned out all right playing <laughs> nine for a couple of games and then he, after that he was the man. You know they played I mean? for Australia in 99 and they had a test series against the Kiwis and yeah. I went to watch every game. I remember it so clearly, but like Joey was at the nine and he was at the seven. That's why I remember it. I was like, fuck. And then who was six? Baz and that played six. Eh? Yeah. They always had big sixes, Baz, Freddie. Freddie. I think Freddie was a six around that time. Yeah. And then obviously Lockyer at the back or had some guys. Had some good teams, man. Um, so obviously like you started the game and you talked about video a little bit earlier. I was out at Penrith. they just finished field session walk past and half the boys are in the video room looking up their training sessions and stuff yeah. like that. Do you enjoy that side of the game? Yeah, I do. I do. I used to nerd out on it, bro. I used to love it. And all the boys are like, fuck, get me out of video. I yeah. used to like it. So we do we do a fair bit of video. And one thing I noticed about Newcastle straight away is everyone's keen to go and do individual video with attack coach, D coach, and then head coach. And the one thing I admired about our group, it's when when things wasn't going great, a lot of people shy away from the video that you don't want to watch your missed tackle, you don't want to watch your kick out on the full, you don't want to watch your intercept. But we had a group of boys willing to actually go forward and walk into that, which is which is pretty hard to do. As a grown man too, you don't want to like, feel embarrassed, you don't want to feel belittled. But like we had a group that was challenging themselves every day and then you got an app on your phone. I don't know if it was around Huddle when yeah, you were around. No, we didn't have that. So no. we, got, we got a bloke that just sends it on the Huddle. You just can watch it on your phone anytime, anywhere. Mm. So like... Or if I'm going into a video session, sometimes I'll quickly, I'll rehash. If, if I know that Greeny's going to make an attack point, I'll quickly go watch all our shots. So if he throws to us and goes, right, I want the halves to lead this, I've got a clear vision in my mind of what I want the session to look like, how I want my back rolls to run, if my centre wasn't tucked, if I threw a bad pass, right, was that my timing, was that the, the back rolls timing? And then obviously edge D2, now it's all about spacings, getting up high, moving off the line, dragging your middles through. So I think as a player these days, especially in the halves, you want to you want to be across the whole part of the game. You want to know the team's game plan, what your strengths are, defensively how you can help the team win, and then you just add your own little bit onto all three of those things, and generally you're going to play well. So you got to nerd out on if you play seven for sure. Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah have I think to, you have to. Uh, yeah, because yeah. like uh, when I was playing, it was more so like group education, and yeah. Ivan was big on video too. Yeah. So um, like we didn't really have all that individual stuff. Yeah. It's changed so much. I, I think it's so much better. I'm not massive on writing heaps of stuff down. So I'll write down key points, and I'll take in what the coach is saying, and then I won't read too much before a game. I, I feel like I. For me personally, I'm a visual learner and I want to have it all in my head before I get to the ground. If I, I feel like if I was to open a book and read through the week's worth of what we want to do, I feel like I would freak myself out, have I, have I got everything? Whereas I just nail, try and nail the, the key points that the coaches coach has given us as a team this week. Mm. And then I'll go in and have an attack focus with Greeny, a D focus with Rush, and then I'll just go from there. And then the middles just do their job, the backs do their job, and it all kind of flows really. How do you find the balance between like being by pass first type of half of running? Because I feel like you run at the right times. Yeah. Like that was something I always struggled with. Like where do you find that balance? Yeah. So like at the Tigers, bro, like I was having, I had a game against Newey. We got slapped by 40 and I ran for like 210 meters and I was taking pointless, pointless carries. Yeah. Like, so I went from, as a kid, always a runner first, always like show and go, try and do stuff for myself. Went to the Roosters. I became a bit of a robot, a bit like pass first, not too much running. When I went to the UK, I said to myself on the plane over, I was like, 
I'm going back to I'm running first. I want to be a runner first. I want to be a threat with the footy. Use my body type. Use my frame. I was running for like 24 times a game. Pointless, <laughs> pointless runs, bro. Yeah. Oh, so my stats would be one try assist, 29 carries. Everyone's freaking out over the carries. So like it was almost like stat padding in a way. And I was, and I was thinking after games like I had 29 runs or 24 runs, whatever it was, but they were shit runs. And then I got to a point where I went to Wigan. I played with Tommy Little while I was playing second receiver where I had a guy that could play on the footy for me, do all the organising, but I still wanted to nail my kicking game, nail my ball playing. And he, and he just kind of helped me with like, He's like, there's no point in running at a set straight line and taking a hit up for the sake of it. Whereas now, I still come back again. I was taking pointless runs at the Tigers. And then I, I took a step away and I worked with Green. He's like, well, if you're playing on the footy, you're going to get a heap of touches. A lot of the ball, a lot of the defense is going to go to where you are. But then that's when KP comes into it. Yeah. If, you, if you use him the right way and you don't just throw him the ball and say, please do something, Kalen, you actually use him up. All right, decoy, decoy. Go across him a couple of times, bring the defence up, you get a free look at the centre. Is he going to jam Kalen or is they going to try and work him back off? I, mean, I just got a lot of free looks at people throughout the year, whereas yeah. a lot of teams, obviously, as you do, fly up and try and try and kill him. You're like, oh, I would play soft short to Fitzy. Right, the centre's coming. Tunnel ball, go past the centre. Then the centre's like, oh, well, he's got me on a short ball, he's got me on a tunnel ball. If I just fly out past the line again, I'm putting a lot of pressure on my half. Mm. And as a half, you're like to your centre, mate, <laughs> Stop isolating me with this big prick. Yeah, like, yeah. Stay in the line. So I was trying to manipulate the fences that way. And then um, once people thought he's just going to pass, 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 and it's time to show and go, you know what I mean? Test, test the line out. Yeah, I heard you say two people, Greeny and Tommy Lillawai. Yep. I've played with guys that played with both those guys. And Louis Brown's a great example. He goes, yep. they're the two smallest guys I've ever met in football. Blake, Blake Green's intelligence, like I had him – um, sorry, I was with him at Manly when he was a 5'8", and I knew he was smart. But he, attack-wise, he's the smartest bloke I've ever been around in my life. And he, and he does it in a relaxed way. Like, he, he, Greeny's a, a footy nerd, but he's also like, let's go have a coffee, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's real energetic, and he reads the room so well, bro. Like, we could walk in and we could be flat, and he will just, at the click drop of a hat, bang, nail a joke, and it'll bring everyone up. Or if everyone's too high and a bit ahead of themselves, so he's very good at like, right, oi. Oh, yeah. Mm. you're not that good kind of thing we need to nail this and he's very relatable he only retired what four years ago so like he's still fresh and relatable to players too and then Tommy Tommy over in Wigan man was unbelievable to play with man of few words on the field but when he spoke bro you listen because like He's out here smacking six foot four yeah, back rollers. Yeah, he can put shots on, eh? Best pound for pound hitter I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Ever seen. Ezra Man might be able to give him a go yeah, at the moment. Yeah, yeah he hits, similar. He hits good. I'm trying to think of who else can hit. But like, in terms of being half, no one wanted to run at him. Over in Super League, people would be like, <laughs> they'd be running the lead on him. No, 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 at the back, at the back. <laughs> Just praying not to get the ball. But um, I remember we played him and like I was catching the ball and you know, you throw it off to the prop and usually the half's like cruising yeah. out on the wing. He was that three man coming yeah. up, like yeah. trying to put on shots. Yeah, like usually well, what's you spot, he doing? Usually you spot the half and most people are just like, I'll <laughs> oh, stay away from him. You could tell him from the way, this tall too. But, and um, it's the the angry eyebrows they too. They used to crack me up. His <laughs> laugh gets me as well, man. But um, yeah, he, he's going to be a good coach, bro. You, you could always tell he was going to be a coach. So he, he's already in that space and I reckon he'll he'll be in there for a long time, mate. Yeah. Um, what's the goals for this year, bro? Win a comp. I know that's fuck, that's very... Um, I don't I know everyone says that, but you, do you believe that? I genuinely believe we can, yeah. yeah. I think we've got evidence now that what we that we want to do works, the way we play works. I know we've lost a couple of boys. We've lost one of the best wingers in the comp. Thank we you. Lost, we lost Fitzy. <laughs> yeah, I know you're a roof supporter. Uh, we lost Fitzy who nailed his role perfectly for us last year. But I believe in the pieces that we've got too. Like, I think a lot of players in our team are underrated. Like, if you go through our back line, like, we've obviously got the superstar at the back. But then you've got blokes like Bradman Best who just re-signed, which is, which is great for our club, who... Is one of the best centers in the comp. I think he proved at Origin level that yeah. he's going to be a rep player for for many years. We got Gags. I, d- there. I, I doubted him, eh? I doubted him. Yeah. Like I, I don't know why. Like it sounds so stupid now. Well, I think a lot of people doubted him because um, he's been sort of in and out of first grade because of injuries. He had a bit of a bad injury run at the start of his career. He had a bad dislocated elbow. I think he hurt his ankles a few times too. So he hadn't had a clean run and. And last year he was, he was dominant in games. I think if you watched our games back, the games especially that we won. Kalen would always get the rap, rightfully so, because he would be the icing on the cake for a lot of huge plays. But Bradman's work out of the backfield and stuff, and then if he gets half a gap, it's it's, yeah, it's see you later, later bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think like you look at Gags as well. He's still an Origin player. I don't care what anyone says. If he gets picked for Queensland this year, he'll do a fantastic job. Greg Marsview's 
got we got something in him that no one else in the comp has. No one can carry the ball like Greg. Oh, sorry, Brian Toll. Brian Toll. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to disrespect him. He 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 does it every week for Penrith, but he's body types like that. But Jacks, mate. Mm. Like I've never seen anyone built like that, low to the ground. So he gives us something that only a few people have. So like your Toll is him, and then like you look at our pack, we have got two like world class boys in the Safs there. Leo Thompson's world class. Adam Elliott. Who oh, I always think clubs need a guy. And yeah. like when I when I say guy, when they run out on the field and you're on the defensive defensive side, like you look up and Roosters, they got Jared. Back yeah. in the day, Souths had Sammy. As um, who's your guy? We've got a couple, bro. Like I reckon um, when they're on Daniel, Daniel for us is that big alpha. Like he's the big like. Because I know I know his carry's good and I know he's a big boy, but like, are you looking at him going like, fuck, is he going to bang he, me? He's had a, he's had a few niggles, which I think he's sorted now. So I think he won our Player of the Year in. 2021 i think and don't he, get me wrong those boys are elite but yeah. like you know the, the guy who's a little bit tapped like yeah oh, mitchy barnett was like jack harrington <laughs> yeah, he might be too tapped yeah, uh, <laughs> but look in terms of alpha in our team i reckon daniel daniel leads the way in, oh. in that space for us but the one coming through for us is leo thompson yeah oh, he um him playing all this rep footy for new zealand and 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 the all-stars and stuff like that i think he's going to come back again a better player like he took his experience hanging around with fish and moses and nelson and that back to our preseason, and you can tell he went from here to here and then I reckon That's when he good, comes back yeah. from All-Stars he's going to be here and he's in our leadership group now bro like a man of like few words but he has that spark in his eye that you know that no don't he step from, from yeah. yeah he's that one guy on our team Cause like, that's like fishing out, because eh? they, they don't say much. Like, oh, they're the, the scariest people they're <laughs> the scariest people bro the ones that are like unassuming and don't talk a lot and um, I don't want to compare him to Fish because Fish is arguably the best prop in the comp but mm. I reckon Leo's got the makings of being 2.0 hopefully for us what about variations in four packs uh, body shapes because yeah. a, a lot of people don't realize this like i looked at the dragons a couple of years ago when normie was saying playing there all their forwards were kind of like the same build like yeah. they're almost like a cookie cutter and you get in a rhythm of tackling, tackling those, those body yeah. yeah that's spot on bro yeah um so you got the variation there like you had fitzy who was kind of tall yeah. run the one of the toughest lines in the game then yeah. you got frizz who's solid and built and like can bounce around you know what i mean the rock he's a rock so w how important is that for like a seven yeah it's massive because like uh, being a half like we got so we got we got a good mix this year we've got jed cartwright who's a, a big big human who can play back row we've got frizz who is thick, athletic, robust, copies Paul, as I spoke about, six foot seven, long, rangy, big upper body. Uh, Dill Lucas, who's like compact, fast, good feet. So for me, knowing how to use all them to isolate an opposition three man is, is really important. But I think in our pack, we call them the Twin Towers. We've got the two staffs that are yeah, large, yeah. massive. Then you've got Leo Thompson, who's a bit lower to the ground. Adam, Adam Elliott's kind of in between. Then you've got the gigantic back rower, you've got the athletic back rower. So like our whole forward pack are, are different heights, which is which is big for us. And then we've got other blokes in our pack, like Matty Croker, who's another 13, who, who's very low to the ground. And, he had uh, a good year good, last year, right? Very yeah, good, mate. Yeah. Like he's, um, he was one of our unsung heroes, Croak, so I'll give him a shout out. He'll love this. He <laughs> loves the podcast space. But um, <laughs> no, he's um, he's been really, really good again. He's he's one of them guys that can play tough through the middle and, and play that front row role, or he can, he can play that sort of like, 13 link role so he's been impressive for us we've got a lot of boys that um we've got a lot of depth now especially in the back row position which is you kind of need it too that's don't exciting you? man yeah, yeah yeah you do you do because if you lose one you don't want to rely on one like last year we had Fitz who was unbelievable for us on that left edge and then Dill Lucas went in uh and played admirably in every game he played but Fitz just had that style that suited the way we we're playing that year so now we've got all the boys having a preseason under that system yeah for sure it's going to help us because he went from being a center deal midway from the year to back row. So he was still learning the process. So we played a little bit different with him there, but we'll go back to that same way now that... Um, Had a beer with him at uh, Beachy last year. Good dude. Yeah, he loves the beers, doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah he loves the beers. He, he does well the down too. He's hanging out with the John's boys. Yeah, so he I loves like, the John's boys. <laughs> yeah. Um, bro, what do you... Like, obviously, you look at the game at a very broad, broad perspective. What do you like about the NRL at the moment? And two-part question, what do you think can change? Oh, that's a good question, bro. I like the way the game's becoming not so structured. It's structured, but we're getting back to that freestyle of football like don't get me wrong you have your founder every team has the foundation of how they want to play we want to get to this point we want to isolate this defender but at the same time we've got blokes just taking wide threes wide twos two on twos down short sides but there's a lot more ad lib football in it so mm. it's bringing back the smaller guy too um but our bigger guys are getting a lot fitter and churning out a lot more minutes getting way more stats and i love i love like the exposure the game's getting at the moment too i mean players are taking um their sort of um 
their own profile and doing more things of it. I know you're big on that and you're mm. one of the leaders in that space. But I think you can see blokes like, I think Reese Walsh has got 400K followers. I think Kalen's close to that. Um, Nathan would be close to that. Jerome, Bizzo, all them boys are, are close to that. And like they've started their own clothing company, I think. Yeah, Jerome yeah, and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so I think like the exposure the game's giving individuals. And we've got heroes and villains. That's sort of coming back. I like that a lot of people are comfortable with not being exactly loved by every other fan base. I think we need to have that kind of like when someone comes to Newcastle, we want the crowd to to, to not exactly love the team, but we'll, it's always cool watching a player run out getting booed and they deliver a performance. Maybe not against Newcastle, but yeah, yeah. a player that every other team loves to hate. And whilst I think we're getting that back too, which is um, it brings a storyline back into the game. We're not like the NFL where someone's going to call out like a, a DB is not going to call out an offensive player and be like, I'm going to go at him and I'm going to suck the quarterback 10 times. I'm going to come for his neck. We're not going to ever be like that. But Do you reckon we could? It's just not not, not the Australian way. Well, it's not going to be me anyway, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be starting that. I, I, don't need any, I don't need any battles, especially one-on-one -on -one battles. But I reckon um, there was there was something with the origin a couple of years ago. Wasn't it the centers were going at it? I think centers... But so probably centers and props are probably the only. That's two. the only one, yeah. Yeah, like no, I'd love to see props come out and. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'd love to see it too because I don't have to worry about it. I just jog past them and do, <laughs> good, good tackle. <laughs> just push up, eh? Like, but um, yeah, bro. Like, I love the way the game's um becoming a bit more free flowing and not block play for block play. I know, like with the obstruction rule, it's it's hard to run a good genuine block now with all the different variables and that. And then I love the exposure the game's getting and players taking accountability for, for their own profile and, and using that to um, not not just gain money or like fame or anything like that. They're actually using it to their advantage for business ventures and stuff like that outside of footy, which is cool. Yeah, and the cool part is like, oh, the weird part is like, it's probably that I, I said this in the Penrith chat and never made it online, yeah. but like Nathan Clary's Instagram profile is bigger than Penrith's and I know Latrell's similar. Reese's yeah. got more followers in New South Wales. Yeah, yeah, that's like, crazy. Think, hey? Yeah, yeah. So it's probably the first time in rugby league history where personal brands are starting to become a lot more bigger. Yeah. Uh, who do you support? And you said LeBron. And I always thought LeBron was the like start of that yep. when he went to Miami and fans follow him and they go to Miami. Yeah, yeah. He goes back to, back Cleveland, to Cleveland and Lakers. Yeah. I think that's the way sports is going to be right now yeah. where they follow individuals more so than teams. Yeah, 100%. Because we haven't got that like side like we spoke about at the start with England where you're born and raised and it this comes is where my the dad family bloodline. Yeah. Yeah. My dad stood here, so we stand here. Yeah, like I, I, grew up, I grew up on the South Coast in Wollongong and there was more like Knights, Roosters, Tigers, Raiders supporters than there was Dragon supporters, which is crazy <laughs> to me. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Like a one-town club should have more supporters where – Obviously, it might have changed now. I haven't been there for a long period of time. And then I go to Newcastle when everyone loved Newcastle. Yeah, they walk around cool. with Newcastle jersey on, Newcastle hats. You get people stopping you at a cafe. Can I buy you a coffee? No, no, it's all right. I can, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can get then it. I appreciate I'll get, it. I'll yeah. get you one. Are you sure? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I agree with that for sure. I agree with that for sure. Yeah. Uh, what don't you like about the NRL? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Like, I... Right. I'm a purist, man. Like, I love the game, mate. Eh? Like, oh, I'm a student of it. I love everything about it. Like, I, there was no plan B for me. So, like, I, there's not really anything in the game that I'd look at you and go, oh, I hate this. Like, I have this joke with our uh, D coach, Rory Cost Jason. Like, I'm not a massive fan of wrestling. Mm. I'll be the first to put my hand up. He'll go, who doesn't want to do this? Oh, I'd love not to do this, mate. But I also know the feeling I get after having a successful session. So, I'm like one of them weird blokes that will be honest. I, Mate, I'd prefer not to do this, obviously. But I get it done, I'm like, fuck, I'm glad I did that. So there's nothing really in the game. Maybe the media scrutiny, like the how hard they go for some individuals, I hate that. A lot of those guys I've played with coming through as a kid and I've seen them grow and I know what they're like as people, I know what they're like as family family men, uh, what they do for their community. And then all of a sudden because they're themselves or they play the game a certain way to how a journalist wants them to, they get the the free shot at them. I don't like that. Yeah, there's always, there was always one guy a year, eh? Like, like all the time. Latrell Jerome's probably the guy at the yeah. moment that gets the clicks. Corey's been that guy. He was yeah. the guy for a bit. So yeah, but but you look at them away from football, and you get to know the person, the dad, the brother, the whatever, mm. and they're they're some of the best people you ever met, ever meet, and they're and they're role models for their community. But yet we want to constantly target them and and write stories about them year on year to try and get more clicks because of their personal brand is bigger than the media outlet you know what i mean yeah and, and like some people take it too far man there's some journos that take it too far with individuals it almost makes it personal which i don't like they've got the right to write a story no doubt and i've got a good relationship with a lot of journalists funny enough they've they've hammered me for years but i've got yeah. a 
I've built a relationship with with a lot of them because you do need them at certain points for sure. But it's, it is part of the game now, isn't yeah, it? You yeah. Can, like when I was coming through, there was people like, nah, don't talk to him. We hate him. But at the same time, bro, you're going to need them eventually. <laughs> and, they're, and they're not all bad <laughs> people. It's like that, eh? Yeah. They're don't not all bad people, mate. They've got to do a job. But I just think some sometimes the... The story is just so far fetched. You get a click. I don't. I don't like that. Yep. Um, yeah. So Newcastle going to win the comp this year. What's your personal goals? Just to improve on uh, myself as a person, as I touched on at the start, and, and have a better year than I did last year. You know, I was, I was, I was happy with with the improvements I made from when I was at the Tigers. I feel like. I had a decent year. I feel like my year as an individual got better. I just want to keep improving every year. Never. How do you, how do you improve as a player? Yeah, just probably like nailing my role within the team even better than what I did last year. Knowing who I'm playing with, what their strengths are, how they like the footy, uh, what they expect of me. Um, one little thing I'll just give to you that you could probably hold me accountable for throughout the years. Probably my push. Like I'll probably get a bit carried away with trying to make sure everyone knows their job and missing what's actually happening in front of me. <laughs> so when Kalen's making these breaks, instead of having like just the wingers, <laughs> it'd be good for one of us halves to sort of push up the middle yeah. and get a couple more walkovers. That'd be nice. Yeah, you got you got, got the um, next play set up though. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The coach always goes, where were you? I was like, oh, it would have been a grouse flavour. <laughs> yeah. I had uh, a coach once say one time that um, the easiest way to get your name in the paper is push up through the middle. Exactly right, bro. Terry mm. Lamb made a career out of doing That's one it. of the great five eights. Mm. But yeah, be a better person. Um, be a better teammate but then just be a better player so as I said like push on every play I want to, I want my defence to be rock solid on an edge you know I'm a, I'm a pretty big body for a half so I've got no excuse not to make tackles and then yeah I, for me I want to like get into some stuff away from football what that looks like I'm not too sure um, but there's definitely a side of me that is interested in like delving in different things uh, maybe even failing at something away from football to learn lessons to get better at it from 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 the next time I want to do it but um yeah, those are probably the key things I want to do. I eh? ah, last thing you've sort of touched on mental health a little bit. What what mental health issues have you gone through? Yeah, I, d I didn't want to come on and uh, make the pot a sob story, so I'm glad we we spoke a lot about footy, bro. But like, uh, yeah, I got I got clinically diagnosed um, a week ago with uh, low grade depression, OCD, and anxiety. So I'm on medication for that now, and I'm not saying that for everyone to come out and pat me on the back and give me a hug. But I lost a mate. Sorry, we, sorry, when you got that, um, when you got diagnosed with that, was that like kind of like relief, like having that label to you, or did you feel so? Like so I've always known there had been something wrong. I reckon from maybe the age of fourteen. Mm. I reckon I always knew, and I've got no excuse for what's happened in my life. I take full accountability, but parts of that has been an issue for me with relationships, getting in trouble, making like impulsive decisions. That's definitely been part of it, but I'd never had the courage to sit down in front of someone and, and ask for help. Literally reach out and go, bro, like, can you actually help me? Um, about two months ago, I did that to the welfare manager at the Knights. Mm. I rang him one night and I said, I need your help. And he, and he didn't ask any questions. He just said, what do you mean? And I went, the, the tone of my voice, I think, made him go, oh, shit, like, this, this kid actually needs some help. My partner pushed me to, to get in some help as well. And then I spoke to Adzi, my, my coach, and um, he put his arm around me and said, I'll do anything for you. And then the nights have been brilliant through that process, put me onto someone and, yeah, got clinically diagnosed. So for me, I was walking around thinking I had something wrong, like, oh, I'm a bit different in this, this circumstance or in this situation, I act different to 20 other blokes. Mm. Really, there's nothing wrong with me. I just needed a bit of help and, um, yeah, I'm glad I did it. I lost a mate to suicide, Regan Grieve, who was an up-and-comer at the Cowboys when we were 17. And I always think, like, if he reached out for some help, how different, obviously, his family life would have been. He could have been playing NRL. We could have been playing against each other as mates, living mm. the dream. But um, I always look back on that moment and go, I, I want to hopefully get through to someone that might be struggling. And as I said, me saying that to you isn't a pat on the back or oh, I don't want any sympathy for it. I just want to – I want people to know that it's actually all right to, to say you need some help and then when you get some help, your life completely changes. I've only been on what the the tablets I've been on for four days, but I can already feel like I'm getting up in the morning and there's a spring to my step. Like, all right, let's go, let's go attack the day. Mm. It's not so much about writing goals down or get out of bed and have a smile on your face. It doesn't work like that. You got to work on yourself constantly. And yeah, I'm I'm doing that. What's harder, depression or anxiety? Well, I didn't think I had depression. I didn't think that was going to be something that popped up. I definitely had anxiety when I walk into a room full of people. I yeah, I, I'm, I'm always looking like... <laughs> it felt like that when you walked through. Like, yeah, yeah, like oh, I still do it. I'm like, oh, I wonder what... But that's the thing you spoke at the start. Like, 
people have a certain uh, image of me mm. and I know they have that image of me. So I'm, also, I'm instantly going, geez, I don't know what he's going to think of me. Is he going to like shake my hand? Do you reckon he's, <laughs> he's going to say, hey, bro, how you going? Like, so, yeah, that's probably the hardest thing and letting my walls, let my guards down, letting people in. Like there's plenty of opportunity where people want to help, help me like with other things besides football and I've always put my guard up and they're mm. probably going, well, fuck him if he wants to act like a snob, which I'm not. I was just a bit nervous or a bit anxious to see what they were going to say to me. Yeah. I probably would have had a lot more opportunity away from footy too. So, yeah, I'm glad I'm sort of breaking that down and um, hopefully if there's anyone watching that's on the on the fence about doing it because they're scared of what people are going to think of them. Um, they're embarrassed to say that they have something wrong with them or they need help with something. It's probably the better word. And then hopefully that I can be a little bit of just a tiny bit of inspiration for them to to go out and ask is it easy, Is it easier to tell someone you don't know or someone you do know? Well, I just, man, you met an hour ago, I told yeah, you. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've always been a pretty honest guy, like pretty open with um, with all sorts of stuff. So for me, it's not embarrassing. I think it's not embarrassing because I, I deep down knew for a long period of time. I just needed clarification on that by a professional. And that was a weight off the shoulders? Yeah, when, mate. Yeah. When she told me, I kind of went, my, my life sort of starts again now. You know what I mean? Like I get to have a new lease on life. I get to uh, work on myself, sort of, I go back every month and see this person and we've got a list of goals and things like that. So, yeah, no, nah, the medication just doesn't fix you. You're not just like, boom, you're different. Yeah. That helps. It helps with your sharpness, alertness, but you've got to work on yourself constantly. Shit, crazy. Um, um, bro, I just wanted to thank you for jumping on. Oh, oh, like I said, sure. I had a preconceived notion of you before and glad I got to meet with you and chop it up and wish you nothing but the best for the year. Nah, appreciate it, brother. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Good on you, Kaz. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,